right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Portland, Oregon by Tim James, who is the health hero. How are you doing, Tim? Hey, I'm doing awesome, John. Thanks for having <laughs> me on your show, brother. Yeah, no, it's I'm I'm really excited to uh, to learn about this uh, chemical free body uh, and all of that. And you're what you're going to talk about today is you're going to give us an overview of how you went and changed your life and became like a this healthy person. So how you turned your health and your life around. So can you give us a a kind of broad outline of that, and then we're going to dive into maybe some of the details. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for the listeners out there, I grew up over in eastern Oregon on a small cattle and hay farm. I was hunting and fishing. Um, some would say I'm a redneck. I guess I would have to agree <laughs> with that. Uh, so pretty, I, you know, I didn't even grow up, I, you know, I was out in the middle of nowhere. So it was it was kind of fun growing up. Um, and, uh, you know, I ate the standard American diet. Um, I was an athlete for 30 years. I played baseball at a high level. So I thought I knew what I was doing with nutrition, you know, eat protein for muscle and drink milk for strong bones and you know, and I do a lot of that. And then uh, what happened though, is um, at age 37, uh, I had the house and kids and coaching, you know, basketball and football and soccer and doing that kind of stuff and kind of got out of the baseball deal. Uh, it was time to let the kids do their thing. And, um, but I, I was 38 pounds overweight. Well, I was actually more than that, but 38 pounds overweight. Um, I had eczema on both of my elbows. So I was bleeding, especially in the winter times, my I'd ruined shirts and my elbows or I'd bump up on your couch or your in your house or something I, it's bleeding it's stupid and then i had it all the time i had a huge patch on my knee i had another skin issue on my shoulder i was eating tums and roll aids like they're going out of stock because i had heartburn so bad i was like all the time and then it got worse and then i started bleeding rectally when i'd go number two and then i just you know every time i went to the bathroom i was like god i hope that goes away and then i just go back to my life and so and and going to the bathroom was not a very pleasant experience because it was also very very painful for me so that wasn't looking forward to that. Um, and then it was on a trip I um, to Peru. We had this trip with our family all planned out for over a year. And then I got, um, uh, a, I had a problem. And I basically had to be driven in the middle of the night for six hours on this bumpy road to Piora, which is this town in Peru, went to the hospital. And, and um, I'm laying there on an operating table in a third world country with flies flying around me in, a, in the light. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, geez, this is not the place that I really wanna get operated on or have problems. And then luckily for me, uh, my wife at the time's dad was a physician. He was running a huge clinic in Lima. So they doped me up at this hospital in, in uh, Peora and then put me on a plane flight, which you're, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. And then they flew me in and then I went in my, from right in the taxi right into surgery. And, um, and that sucked because um, I ruined my trip. Um, I had to be pushed in a wheelchair back to the States. Um, but what I learned there, John, was that my poor health didn't affect just me. It affected everybody else around me. So I come back. I still don't know what I'm doing. And then a buddy of mine uh, calls me up and I stop by his place. He's like, hey, man, I got cancer. And he got chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is this supposedly uncurable blood cancer. And I was like, oh, crap. Now, I just lost a friend of mine on my baseball team at age 40. His name was Kalei Mahoy to um, like stomach cancer. And he did mm -hmm. conventional treatments and that stuff didn't work. And my grandma died of brain cancer and my aunt had died of melanoma skin cancer. So for me, my, my experience with cancer was you get it and you're toast, you know, it it's takes your life. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, geez, here goes another one of my friends. Um, but Charles is like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm outside the box. Like I want to see my son, Charlie graduate high school. I want to go to father son weekend at Oregon state university. They had this whole thing all planned out. I'm going to go to this place in Florida called the Hippocrates Health Institute. They're a natural detox and nutrition clinic. And I want you to go with me to support me. And I'm like, yeah, buddy, whatever you need, I'll do it. Had no idea what I was getting myself into. Because remember, I was the guy that was meat and potatoes guy. And then on the plane flight there, Charles was like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's no meat. There's no dairy. There's no salt. There's no sugar. There's nothing cooked over 115 degrees. And I'm like, dude, to myself quietly i'm like you lost me at no meat <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so you you thought you were going to go and be you know a, a cheerleader or a supportive you didn't think you were going to be in this intense program yeah well i was doing the whole thing yeah i was i was mm. doing it all so um what happened was is the first few days wasn't that fun and they 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 taught us uh, this the first class john was called internal awareness and i'll sum mm -hmm. it up really quick so this doctor comes out he's in really good shape full of muscles 
And um, I'm just like, wow, this guy's like built like an athlete, right? So I was like, respect, you know? Yeah. And, um, and he starts talking and stuff. And he starts telling us this class called an internal awareness from the time you eat food until the time food exits the body, what happens? Well, I was like, wow, where was this information? This is amazing. <laughs> like they, they, they shows you how important it is to chew your food and all these other things. And, and, um, and then the, the, the end of that deal was that you have the average person's walking around with six to 12 pounds of impacted fecal material in the colon that's built up and accumulated over the years. And, uh, you know, it's seeing as believing and I'm sitting there and they're, they're showing scopes going inside of people and say 24 year old female with breast cancer and Crohn's mm -hmm. disease. And you'd see inside of her colon, it didn't look good. It was like yellows and greens and or, you know, 64 year old woman with, you know, whatever, lymphoma, cancer, and, you know, um, something else, mm -hmm. right? Or somebody with Hashimoto's and this, or another right. five year old man with parasites, and you'd see parasites crawling around in there. And it's just like, oh my God. And then he's like, yeah, 50% of people have parasites. And they're not just the ones you can see, like the hookworms and the tapeworms. Yeah, yeah. They're little ones. And I was like, what? And then all of a sudden, I didn't want to do it, but he was trying to sell us on enemas and then colon hydrotherapy. Have you heard of colon right. hydrotherapy? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. those of you listening that aren't aware, you sit on a tube rectally and water goes in and out of you for an hour and it cleans your colon gently. I didn't want to do it. I remember elbowing Charles and saying, hey, dude, I came here to help you, but I'm not doing that. But after that mm -hmm. guy got done talking for three and a half hours and showing us the insides of people that were sick, I'm like, I'm cleaning my, I'm signing up. The next day <laughs> I go, I get weighed. I do the colon hydrotherapy thing the next, and they weigh me again i dropped 10 pounds of funk My and gosh. dunk and junk in a, a one hour session so that's what happened um I, I went through this massive detox i wasn't feeling good headaches night sweats irritable i had a metallic taste on my tongue as the heavy metals were exiting and then i woke up on thursday i felt like a new person i looked at charles and i said hey man you're going to make it and i'm going to follow this whole lifestyle stuff with you i'm going to give up all meat except for bacon and we're going to rock this thing and um, we came back and we started juicing twice a day with the juicers and you know, not making sugary drinks, but just cucumbers and celery. And I started growing sprouts mm -hmm. and wheatgrass and getting into living foods. Like, and I grew mm -hmm. up on a farm. So, you know, growing stuff was easy for me because I'd done it my whole life. Um, it, I found out that other people didn't like doing it that much, but you know, for the <laughs> most part, it was, it was pretty easy. It's not hard to grow things. And I started putting all this juices and living foods into my diet. And um, I went on a plant-based healing regimen for eight and a half years. And, um, I healed myself. And in 60 days, I'd mm -hmm. lost all the weight, um, within eight months, all the skin issues, everything was gone. I mean, it was gone, the blood, the rectal bleeding, everything. And it's wow. been 10 years now. I've never had acid mm -hmm. reflux since I've never had bloody stool since I've never had eczema since, um, my body's healed up and I've learned how to maintain it. And I walked away from my job as a financial advisor to teach people what mm -hmm. I did so that they don't have to go through the pain that I did. So when you first started this process, right? So it's it's pretty dramatic, right? Okay, uh, what you just outlined, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty dramatic process and it's a complete lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think with, with any change, right? For all the best intentions in the world that we have, um, you know, change is difficult and the going gets tough at, per at different periods of time. So. And often at the start, you know, you start full of enthusiasm and then you maybe hit your first roadblock or bump or whatever. And a lot of people would give up at that point. So I, I assume you must have had moments, particularly early on, where this was really tough and difficult. But how did you continue and how have you sustained this over the mm -hmm. years? Well, for me, I think it was different than most people out there, because obviously up until that point, mm -hmm. I didn't... I, I was screwed. I didn't know what to do. I was reading books, trying all this stuff, going online, trying this supplement, trying these things. Nothing was working, going to my doctors. They want me to go on Prilosec and do these other things. Mm -hmm. But for me, what happened was two things, John. Number one is we went to a place that specialized in this stuff for over 60 years and had served over 600,000 people. So they learned what right. not to do, right? So in the oldest places and, and they just laid out a, a pretty much a plan, right? So that was nice. Um, number two is I had a friend that was, I thought was going to die of cancer. And I gave my commitment to him that I would do this for him to support him. So that commitment that I made to him, not to myself was more powerful in my deal. Cause the way I was raised, my dad told me, you only, you know, you're only as good as your word. If you don't have that, you yeah. have nothing, nothing. And I told him, I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this with you. I did it for two reasons. Number one, because I'd never felt so good in my, for a long time. I, I mean, I felt like I was 19 again. I was 37. And number two, I believed it was going to work because right. 
of all I saw and all the people I interviewed. And I was running around with a notepad and a pencil interviewing everybody there, the people that worked there, people that were coming there to find out what's going on. Cause I couldn't believe some little podunk place in Florida could help somebody help themselves to reverse cancer, but they'd been doing it for 60 years. And what they'll tell you is, and I'm going to be clear here, the Hippocrates Health Institute and no doc, nobody can heal you. What I learned mm-hmm. is you, you have to heal yourself. It's, and yeah. it's really simple. You just have to change the environment that your body is exposed to. Like if you're eating mm. crappy foods and you're in a crappy negative relationship and you know, how, mm. how your body's going to respond better. If you're in a beautiful, loving, supporting relationship and you're eating healthy, fresh foods, who do you think is yeah. going to have a healthier body and a healthier, uh, happier life? Well, it's, it's common sense. So mm. they just taught us these common sense things that are so obvious, but people aren't doing them. Yeah, well, I think I think part of it too is, uh, and you just touched on something there. It's like so. There's sometimes people will get on board with say, okay, let's. I'm going to eat healthier. Okay, I'm going to start. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do all of this stuff. But to your point, they don't change the other parts of their lives that may be equally, if not even more toxic, such as the relationships or the environment that they're in. Therefore, mm-hmm. changing one small aspect, yes, it's it does a benefit to it for sure. But you're not going to get the transformational change. Well, I, I see what you're saying there. Um, are you talking just, you mean like long-term? Yeah, I mean, long-term and and making it so it's not like, you know, just impacts just one area of your life, but impacts all areas of your life. But I'm just, I mean, like you were saying there, when you start looking at, okay, the things that you're putting into your body, you also got to look at the things that you're putting into your mind, the things that you're surrounding yourself, the energy oh, absolutely. you're surrounding yourself with as well. Yeah, absolutely. But what I, I do believe this though, John, I think that, If you can take one area of your life and improve it, it's going to improve all other areas because they're all connected to what? To you, right? So if you have like that negative relationship, right? And it's, it's, it's toxic for you, but Mm -hmm. you start improving your health, then you're going to feel better. You're going to have more confidence and maybe you're going to be able to address that relationship in a different way. Maybe like, maybe I need to crack open a book and learn something about relationships. And maybe it's something that I'm doing or he's doing or she's doing and Or maybe it's like, you know what, I'm not going to put up with that anymore. And it's time for me to get a new relationship or somewhere in between, you know, you can find new things. I do, I do know that, that your health, you know, if you look back to that book, um, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, Mm -hmm. he referenced back to a study that was done in Middletown America, where they spent like 25,000 bucks back then in like the thirties or twenties, which is like millions now. And they interviewed all these people in this town and they asked them like 161 questions and the results came back. And what was the most important thing for people? Number one was their health. And number two was how to connect and, and build relationships with people. So he was trying to show you to sell that book. Like, Hey, look, the number two thing in the world is like connecting with people and having relationships and all that stuff. But guess what? Number one was over 70 years ago, 80 years ago, it was health. That's never going to change when you get, and you start putting health as a priority instead of saying, I don't have time for it. When you say, mm-hmm. I don't have time for my health, you're just, you're, you're just basically saying that my health is not a priority. That's the yeah. statement that I hear now loud and clear. And I used to do it mm-hmm. too. So I'm not like mm-hmm. perfect at all. I mean, I was a mess. Yeah, so, but yeah. you have that statement. And then, so what happens though, is when you improve your health, all other areas will get better. Your health gets yeah. better. And then your relationships can get better. Your finances, your spirituality, your career, everything gets better because they're all connected yeah i mean i guess um that's that's kind of the point i'm making is that don't stop there or do something in isolation because i have seen i'm to be honest uh, i'll be frank with you i have seen people who have gone on severe you know health uh regimens right Mm -hmm. and they start to block out all other areas of their lives and the other areas of their lives actually suffer as a consequence so but, but what you're talking about here is is the positive overflow of it so you have to everything in balance right Oh, absolutely. So what you're saying is you've had people that just became fanatical crazies. Exactly. And that's not healthy either because that's, Mm -hmm. you're creating your own stress. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want that. So we definitely want people to be mellow (laughs) and have happy. So what we recommend is baby steps. We get people on, you know, drinking water, our core four secrets. Mm -hmm. Number one, drinking lots of purified restructured water. Number two, chewing your food really well. Number three, avoiding liquids with meals. And number four, doing some breath work before you eat to put your body out of fight or flight and back into rest and digest mode. Those are our core four secrets. That's Mm -hmm. people pay me thousands of dollars a month. And those are the first four things that I have them do. And for those listening, if you start implementing those things, your life, that's the foundation. Your life's going to change 
and we know it will because we ship products worldwide and because of the COVID delays, it's taken two weeks to a month for products mm-hmm. to get to Australia as an example. And, you know, um, people are calling us and emailing us and saying, Hey, I'm already feeling better. I have less gas, less bloating. My energy's up my less, le- less mental fog because they're implementing those core four secrets before the products even arrived. Yeah. And, and one other thing that you mentioned that I wanted to also focus in on was that idea of the fact that you had made a commitment to your friend. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing that was going to, you couldn't let that person down. And I think that's often, uh, the missing ingredient when people try to make any kind of changes in their life or uh, is that if you don't if you don't make some com- maybe committed commit to it out loud maybe you know to someone else to something somewhere where there's some external accountability we're very good at giving ourselves get out of jail clauses right we're going oh well yeah i'm doing it but 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 when you externalize it and you have and you feel obliged because you have held yourself accountable externally that's a mm-hmm. fantastic driver yeah, it's like it's something bigger than you. And I always tell Charles, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I just saw him a little bit ago, and I, was, I said, "Hey, mm-hmm. dude, man, your cancer was the best thing that ever happened to me." Like literally, right. it, and he says the same thing. He's like, "The best thing that ever happened to me," because he woke up. And when you go to Hippocrates, you'll sit down with one of the docs there, and most likely they're going to tell you, you, you'll sit down and say, "Hey, you know," well, they'll say, "What's your problem?" They'll say, "You'll say, well, I got, uh, you know, I got cancer, I got breast cancer," mm-hmm. and the doctor will reply to you, "Well." congratulations you're one of the first one of the few people on this planet that actually get an opportunity to live wow. not just go through life but to live mm-hmm. and be present for the moment and be excited and happy for right now right now right now because a lot of people don't we're always beating ourselves up in the past and i'm going to do this and be this in the future and mm-hmm. they're never even right here like all i have yeah. right now is this conversation with you right and when people yeah. are listening to this this is all they have right now once they're done with this, then hopefully they'll look around, find the next thing that excites them the most, that they have the best ability to take action on, and then go do that. That's the map. But yeah. um, anyway. And what you outlined there about baby steps and the four things that you outlined, I mean, I think this is always good for people to hear because sometimes people see stories like yours and they think, well, yeah, but he's somehow a you know superhuman the way he's done this, and he's very, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not like you know the way and they go I'm not like that I just I couldn't see myself getting there. But you're saying like there are steps, and I think that's it's true of everything, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think sometimes people forget the fact that you know every journey begins with a couple of steps and simple steps that you build on over time. I talked to somebody a couple of years ago, who was hugely overweight and decided one day that they were gonna run a marathon, right? The guy could barely get up the stairs without being out of breath. So he started on day one and he walked for five minutes. And a couple of years later, the guy is completing marathons, right? (laughs) But he started started with a five minute walk. Yeah, he started with that commitment. Yeah. And then those baby steps. Yeah, that's all it really takes. And here I am 10 years into it and now, for me now, it's like, I understand how the body works pretty much. You know, I've done a lot of work on the mm-hmm. immune system and, and learning and cells and all these types of things I never thought I would do. Um, and, you know, and now it's like a game. Like I've healed my gut from that leaky gut and all these problems I had. The, it's all gone. The skin issues are gone. And now I've maintained it for 10 years. Now it's like, how young can I feel? How young can mm-hmm. I look? How long can I live healthy? I don't want to live, you know, because a lot of people, I'm like, how would you like to live to 140? That's or 200. That's my goal. And they're like, I would never want to do that because their picture. And I said, why? Yeah. Well, because I don't want to be they, their, their, their idea of that health is in a nursing home, eating like candy bars and mm-hmm. being on medications. Well, who would, yeah. nobody wants to do yeah, that. Nobody wants that. I'm talking yeah. about running up and down the freaking beach with my great, great grandkids and, and <laughs> tackling them. And they're like, how does great, great grandpa do that? Like, you know, Yeah, I should mention that Tim is actually 96 years old. Yeah. (laughs) I'm actually 47 now. So it's been 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but to your point though, it is, it is. Yes, absolutely. I think when people's people's perception of, of aging and getting old is a particular one, if you change that image and, and as you say, I mean, therefore you have a goal. That's another goal on your, on your journey. Right. Well, yeah, and, and keep keep in mind, like when I went to Hippocrates, all the people that were working there looked 10, 20 years younger than 30 years younger than people their age. Why? Mm-hmm. It's because the standard American diet is high acid and it destroys you from the inside out. And then you're going to get more wrinkles. You're going to age faster. Like if you want to look good on the outside, you have to take care of the inside. That was one of my big takeaways 
after mm-hmm. I left there 10 years ago. If you have a healthy gut, you're going to have awesome, healthy, vibrant skin. You're not going to have the wrinkles. And I'm like, what, what's your body mostly made of? Well, it's water. And most people are drinking crappy water. That's the bottom right. line. And the water's polluted today. I mean, we even, you can go 1500 miles into the interior of these pristine lakes and they're finding the two and two and a half inch fish have both male and female organs. Why? Because of the mm-hmm. estrogen mimickers from microscopic plastics that are pervasive in all the water. That's why we, the first core secret is like, you know, what could I tell people that would have the most radical change in their life with the least amount of effort? Well, change your water. Right? Get mm-hmm. good quality water, get good quality air. You're going to take 20,000 breaths a day. Make sure that your windows cracked at night when you're sleeping and, and purify your home. Cause your, your home's about 20 times more toxic than, you know, downtown anywhere in the worst smoggiest day in the United mm-hmm. States. So, yeah. So there you go. I mean, um, simple, simple advice. Um, I mean, listen, Tim, before we finish though, I did want you to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about you and how they can find out more. Yeah, if you guys want to check us out, we have a lot of resources. Um, our website is chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. And we have a lot of products, John. So people are like confused how to start. So we usually just tell people if you want to try the products, just go to the product tab, click on the savings bundle on the drop down, and that way you can get a discount. And you can start with the jump start bundle or go all the way up to like a total energy and detox bundle, which is what I do on a monthly basis. And then at checkout, they can put in the discount code sales pop and get an extra 5%. So go right. savings bundles, get the discount sales pop at checkout, get an additional discount. So you get the double discount and we have a double your money back guarantee on all of our products because they're just real food and herbs and you won't find toxic synthetic chemicals like dicalcium phosphate or magnesium stearate or silicon dioxide as these binders, fillers and flow agents they're putting in most supplements. So read your labels. It's really important. Um, you can also find us on all the major platforms. I have a podcast called The Health Hero Show. That's awesome. The Health Hero Show. There's a lot of good free information there. And then we have a group coaching program that if people want to join that, that's a paid for program. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And then a great generous offer and the, mm-hmm. the savings bundle looks great. And I can't believe double your money back guarantee is an amazing um, is an amazing thing. So clearly clearly very confident in in the results, um, which is fantastic. Listen, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine. Thanks again, Tim. And I will see the rest of you for another interview really soon. Thank you.